What's up, Church Online family? My name is Vincent, and I'm excited for us all to get to worship together under the umbrella of Church Online. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas one last time. And speaking of Christmas, as we come off the hills of Christmas and look forward to the new year, I think we find ourselves in an interesting position. We're taking a breath from the hustle and hurry, and in some cases, looking forward to anticipation, to excitement, and for some people, worry. But today, right now, we find ourselves in a place of rest, a place of calm, a place of quiet. Tis the day after Christmas and all through your home, crazy cousins have left, your in-laws are gone. Thanking God for the past with the future in sight, here's to the new year, another chance to get it right. And I think we all want that, amen? I mean, I don't know about you, but these past two years for me have been crazy. I mean, a whirlwind. I feel like every time I take one step forward, we take two steps back. Be it natural disaster or national turmoil, this thing has been crazy. I mean, take COVID for instance. As soon as we got a vaccination, as soon as we started opening our doors back up, they found another variant. I mean, these things have been crazy. So as we look into this new year, I think the one thing that you and I would say we want more than anything is a sense of peace. I'm not talking about another diet. I'm not talking about a new skin routine. We're not talking about a book reading goal or some other lofty thing. I mean, true peace. Some of you are big on mantras. We've all heard this one, new year, new me. Or maybe you're big on words. You know how some of you are, you know, my theme for this year is consistency. My ideal for this year is intentionality. But can I say that God wants to do you one better? You know, maybe your goal for this new year should be to aspire to deepen your relationship with him, a new level of intimacy with our Lord and Savior. Maybe your mantra for this new year needs to be new year, new peace. Because I believe as we sit here today, in between the chaos of Christmas and the craze of the new year, that God has a word for you and for me. And that word is peace. Do you receive that? I don't know about you. But I receive that today, Lord, peace in my mind, peace over my heart, peace in my spirit, peace over my family, on my job, for everyone else. Lord, let there be peace on earth. But friends, I gotta tell you, it's not gonna be an overnight thing. We're not gonna go to sleep tonight and wake up with all right in the world tomorrow. Because the fact of the matter is January 1 is coming. And when it does, the majority of us are going right back to that same job, right back to those same people, to the same situations that seem to plague us all last year. You know what they say, same stuff, different day. But what if I told you you can navigate this new world, that you can navigate this new normal, this new year with a sense of new peace? So if you have your Bibles, I want to take a look at one of my favorite passages of Scripture in the Bible coming from Philippians chapter 4 from verse 4 to 9. If you have your Bibles, you can follow along. If you don't, it's very easy. It's going to be on the screen. Just follow along with us. I want to take a look at this passage of Scripture today. So he says, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, and if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. The God of peace will be with you. You know, when I look at this passage, I see a few things. I see instructions, I see reminders, I see a promise. Instructions to praise, reminders of prayer and practice, and ultimately, a promise of peace. But when I take a look at this thing, when I dissect it a little further, I think what Paul is trying to show us is that there is a process. So what I want to do today is I want to look through this passage of Scripture, word by word, line by line, section by section, and talk about that journey, that embarkation, that process to peace. So he says here in verse four, the very first thing he says, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. And for the purposes of this conversation, I want to use the word praise. That's step one in this peace process, praise. Praise him for what he's already done. 
Can we take a second to do that today? Before we go any further, before we go any further, before we sing any songs, before you finish this message, I want to take a second for you to open up your mouth, lift your hands, and give God a praise for everything that he has done. He's brought us through another year. He's brought us through the crazy, the crazy COVID. He's brought us through political unrest. He's brought us through national tumult. For everything that you have done, Lord God, I give you praise. For the clothes on my back, to the shoes on my feet, from the car that I drive to the roof over my head, Lord, I give you praise because you are worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. His is the glory. His is the honor. His is the name above every name. So give him some praise. Psalm 150 says it best. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet, the harp, the lyre, the timbrel, and dancing. Praise him with strings and pipes, the resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, my granddad used to say it best. When somebody does something good for you, you ought to tell them thank you. So I ask you, when's the last time that you stopped to thank him? When is the last time that you reflected on his goodness? When is the last time that you thought about what he's done for you, that you thought about how blessed you are? Because friends, let me tell you, we are blessed. And every time I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, I can't help but to lift a shout of praise. So why don't you do that today? Why don't you praise him? Because when you do that, when you begin to praise him, things begin to happen. And I wanna give you just a few. Number one, praise gets our focus off of ourselves and back on God. We just read in Psalm 150, verse two, it says, praise him for his acts of power, praise him for his surpassing greatness. Because when we praise, our focus shifts from the grind to his greatness. He's worthy to be praised. Number two, praise makes room for God's blessings. Psalm 100, verse four says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his holy name. Because like Chance the Rapper said, when the praises go up, the blessings come down, amen? Amen. Number three, praise invites his presence. Psalm 22, verse three says, he inhabits the praises of his people. And that word inhabit literally means to live in, to dwell in, to take place, i.e. when we praise him, it opens a space, an opening, a home for his presence. And in his presence, there is peace. So we praise him for what he's already done. Number two, we pray. We pray through our pressure. And he says here in verse six, my favorite scripture in the Bible. I mean, whether it's been through jobs, through relationships, through college, through school, through cancer, whatever, uh, whatever I've been through in life, this scripture has resounded in my spirit. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Be anxious about nothing, but in every situation, present your requests to God. And quite simply, when I look at the scripture, I see two commands, worry less, pray more. Worry less, pray more. It sounds simple, but I think to adopt this mantra, to really, to really, really take on this saying, I think we need a better picture of what prayer actually is. I love how our pastor Jeff Clark says it. He says, prayer is simply a conversation between you and God, a conversation between you and your heavenly father. And I think we have a perfect model of prayer in that of the Lord's Prayer. Maybe you learned it as a kid, maybe you didn't, but I wanna take a look at it to kind of break down what we're looking at when it means to pray. He says, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Do you see it? Do you kind of get that progression there? If you were with us last year for 21 Days of Prayer, you may remember this acronym. If you weren't, I want to kind of step through it to show you what prayer is actually doing. And it's found in the name. P-R-A-Y. Pray. P, simply put, we just talked about it. We praise him. Praise and thanksgiving. R, repent. He says it here, right here, and he says, hey, we forgive us for our sins, Lord. Forgive us for our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. Repent for both your known and unknown transgressions. A, ask, petition, supplicate, lay your burdens down. We've done this all past series with our Under Pressure series. We practice what it looks like to approach the throne. We practice what it looks like to lay those burdens down. And that's what asking in prayer is. And last but not least, why we yield. We wait in humble expectancy for our God to move. Wait in humble expectancy for him to move. I'm not the best at prayer. 
It's not that I don't know what to say or that I don't necessarily know how to pray. It's more so that sometimes I don't know what I'm praying for, what I need to pray about. Oh, you know, hey, Jesus' main line is very busy right now. He's got the caller ID backed up. Maybe I can handle this one on my own. Or, or maybe just because I'm praying for this specific situation, just because I'm praying this specific prayer, it doesn't mean that he's going to give me a specific answer, right? Wrong. We see here in Scripture in John 15, 7, he says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Now, don't hear me wrong. I'm, God's not the fairly odd parents. We're not talking about the genie from Aladdin. God is God. But what I do want you to hear is me say, if you are in his way, if you are in his will, then his will will be done. His will will be done. Are you tired? Pray for strength. Are you downtrodden? Pray for joy. Are you weary? Pray for peace. Because when you do these things, things change. It says right here, do not be anxious about everything, anything, but in everything, in every situation, by prayer and petition, present your request to God. And what? Verse seven, and the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds. I love that word guard. He doesn't say cover. He doesn't say he's gonna hug me. He's gonna blanket me. It says he's gonna guard my heart. That peace is gonna guard my heart and my mind. I think about a bouncer in a club. Like, I mean, hey, we here. Peace, peace, it's peace over here. I think about a centurion. He's walking back and forth. He's guarding my heart and my mind from anything that is not peace. Oh, worries over here, boom, you're gone. Stress is over here, click, you're there, right? He's, that peace is guarding my heart and my mind. And I think that a lot of you want that peace today. You want that release, but you've let other things take that place of where the peace is supposed to be guarding your heart. Whether it's bitterness, whether it's envy, whether it's unforgiveness, you've let those things take stake in the place that peace is supposed to reside. So let me ask you, maybe you need to lay some things down today. Maybe you need to lay some of those things down. Prayer is simply casting your cares. Prayer is casting your cares. That whatever, that, that sin, that peace, I mean, that uh, whatever is guarding your heart today that isn't supposed to be there, let those things go and the peace of God will guard your heart and mind. And when we do that, we just said, how does that look? We pray. We approach his throne, his throne with praise. We ask for what we need, and then we wait for God to move. So we praise him for what he's already done. We pray through our pressure. And last but not least, we practice. We practice. He says here in verse 9, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned from me, heard from me, seen from me, put these things into practice. And the, peace, the God of peace will be with you. Put these things into practice and the God of peace will be with you. He says, put it into practice. Don't ponder it. Don't think about it once. Don't set it and forget it. Practice these things and the peace of God will be with you. You know, naturally, if you want to be good at something, we practice it, right? I think about myself in music. Right? I, when I sit down at the piano, when I step up to the piano to perform, I want to know that I'm ready. And the fact that I've practiced, that I've put in those reps, it lets me know that I'm ready to go when those lights come on. I think about athletes. Let's take Steph Curry, for instance, the greatest shooter God ever created. I mean, we just saw him the other night. He broke the record for most threes ever made in the history of the game. Why can he jack up those threes like it's nothing? Why can he make looking, how can he make look, uh, how can he shoot a half court shot and it look like it's so easy, so effortless? Because he practices. He puts up hundreds of shots a day. I think about rock climbers even. One of the most thrill seeking, most adrenaline junkie things out there. I'm reminded of a docufilm. Maybe you've seen it, maybe you've not. It's called Free Solo. And before we go any further, to free solo means to rock climb with no safety gear, no ropes, no net, no crew, no nothing. Just you and the rocks. And in this movie, professional rock climber Alex Honnold, he sets out to climb the 3,000-foot vertical rock face in Yosemite National Park that we know is El Capitan. If you don't and you have a MacBook, it used to be on your screensaver for a couple of years. You remember that, that backdrop? That one. He climbs, or he sets out to climb, this rock. Now, I don't want to spoil the movie for you, but I do want to let you know that for over the course of two years, he practices this every day. He takes this route. He tries this way. He switches this thing up. And for a whole two years, he practices doing the same thing the same way. 
I mean, who in their right mind is gonna do the same thing the same way for two years straight? That sounds like insanity, right? Well, as Alex says, practice makes perfect. And I'm far from perfect. I remember in the movie, his friends, the camera crew, his family, they're all worried. Hey, what if the weather isn't just right? Or, or, or worse, what if he falls? All the while, Alex is cool, calm, and collected. Why? Because he's put in the work, he's put in the practice, so he's expecting to yield the results. So much so that the day he actually does the climb, he wakes up, he doesn't tell his girlfriend, he doesn't tell his family, he doesn't tell anyone. He wakes up, he sets out, and he does what it is that he has put his mind to. You see, I think practice not only makes perfect, practice makes peace. We see here in Isaiah 26, you will keep in perfect peace those minds whose are steadfast because they trust in you. When we are hard pressed on every side, when we, when, we, when, we, when we feel like we're gonna fold, we don't. We go with what we know. We put into practice these things. And what are these things, you may ask? Well, Paul lays it out in scripture. He says quite simply, he says, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, and I don't know about you, but I serve a God whose word is true, whose way is always right, whose character is noble, whose heart is pure and lovely and admirable, and in every way he is excellent and worthy to be praised. He's excellent and worthy to be praised, and every day I'm on a walk, I'm on a journey, I'm on an embarkation, I'm practicing the process to my peace. I'm practicing the process to my peace every day. So as we close today, I wanna to give you some practicalities. I wanna give you some tangible takeaways to what it looks like to embark upon your peace process. So number one, we praise. And what does praise look like? Maybe for you that looks like making a commitment to church. Maybe you've gone through these last couple of years and you've gotten a little lackadaisical days, lackadaisical. Maybe you were watching online and then you were like, uh, I'm a little lazy, I, I just kinda of wanna sleep in today. And, and missing church one day turns to missing church for a month, turns to not going to church at all. So maybe that praise for you looks like making a commitment to church again. Whether you're here online or you're going to a physical campus, whatever that looks like, make a commitment to church this year. Number two, we pray. And practically, maybe that looks like for you joining us for 21 days of prayer. If you're a part of Venture, you know this. If not, we take one month a year, at the beginning of the year most of the time, where we say, hey, we're gonna do a 21 day prayer and fast. And am I asking you to go 21 days without food and water? No but I am asking you to really dig in, to pray with us and to see what God wants to do or what he's saying in and through you at this time. And it's gonna set you up for this next year. Maybe, maybe you're new to prayer or you're like me and we've kind of fallen off a little bit. I'm guilty, I'm guilty. I think we all fall short. But this is a time of year where we can kind of reset, where we can say, hey, I'm gonna kind of get back into what it looks like for me to learn how to pray and for me to kind of tighten up, for me to retrain, for me to flex that muscle a little bit and to learn what that looks like. And last but not least, we practice, practice. And for you, maybe that looks like setting aside a time to get in the word. And it's gonna look differently for everybody. For some people, it's devotion in the morning. For some people, maybe you're going through a reading plan with your wife, whatever that looks like. Maybe you wanna join us for our daily devotionals that we do here at Venture, or you wanna dive into our daily reading plan over this next year. It looks differently for everybody. But make a commitment as we go into this new year to practice to practice in some way, shape, form, or fashion. So praise, get back in biblical community. Praise with community on a weekly basis. Pray, pray in some sort of capacity every single day. Commit to that, commit to a relationship, a conversation between you and your heavenly father and last practice. Get your word in, whatever that looks like, get your word in and don't just soak it up, right? He says, put these things to practice. Share it with people around you, ignite that ministry and those people around you. Number one, we praise. We praise him for what he's already done. Two, pray. Pray through your pressure. And last but not least, put these things into practice. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity for all of us to be able to gather and worship here on our online platform together. And we thank you for opportunities like this where we can all come under one umbrella, under one roof, in, in the name of you. And we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this word today. We ask that you use it to soften our hearts, to soften our minds, and to set us on a path in this new year to find our peace. And Lord, give us endurance. Give us endurance as we go through this new year. We know these last two years have been trying, 
A lot of us have been pushed to the brink, to the breaking point. A lot of us are on the brink of giving up. But Lord, give us endurance. Give us endurance as we go into this journey of peace and give us the strength to continue in this walk, to know, love, and follow you. Lord, we thank you for this experience. We pray that the rest of this experience touch our hearts and minds. And as we go into this new year, that you show us what it looks like to live a life in you, to live a life of peace. And it's in your name we pray. Amen.